All right, my name is Mark Sandlin. I live in Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm a graphic designer. Um, I'm here talking about Voltron today. Uh, Voltron is something that uh, a lot of us 30-somethings grew up with back in the 80s. Uh, it came out about 1984 and it was the most popular cartoon on the air at the time. It was just a huge hit and it really sort of uh, paved the way for things like Power Rangers today. Um, Voltron was a pretty simple uh, Sentai team type of cartoon, which means there are five heroes that I, you can see on the uh, shoulders here. And the five heroes usually uh, pilot some form of vehicle, and then those vehicles combine to form a super robot that fights uh, a monster of the week, is the uh, sort of uh, term that they use for a show like this. It's every week they fight a different monster and they form the big robot and kill the monster. So. At any rate, uh, it's a really simplistic formula, but kids dig it, and it's still popular today because Power Rangers are still going to this day. Um, in any case, uh, since at the time I was a kid and I loved Voltron, um, got a Voltron toy for Christmas like so many other kids, and uh, it was just a lot of fun. And uh, so probably this spring, I was uh, looking at the uh, Brian Cooper's Technomecha instructions, and the uh, if we can go down here for just a moment, there's an, actually a Technomecha right here uh, with with Lee Ward providing the uh, lovely presentation. Uh, that's a pretty much a standard Technomecha frame uh, from Brian Cooper's design. Um, it's got a little color variation, and the head's a little bit different, but by and large. It from his instructions that come from his website. So this spring I was thinking, oh, I want to build another Technomecha. So I was thinking that I would just take a Technomecha frame and reskin it so it looked like Voltron. And at the time, uh, I was chatting with Chris Giddens about it, and he started giving me a hard time about it, you know, saying, hey, does it transform? Is that going to transform? And at some point I was like, fine, all right, I'll make it transform. So. I kind of sat down and started working out how I was going to redesign the joints and how they might work to try to support what was going to be a lot of weight because the Technomecha joints are fairly heavy and, and they all use worm gearing uh, Technic turntables to try to support the, the pretty heavy chunks of bricks that are there on. So um, at any rate, I started work in about uh, May and over the course of about three months, I worked on the uh, various things. I pretty much just started from the feet. I'll move this little picture aside here. I started with the, the noses on the feet and just went backwards. And then I used the uh, worm gearing in the neck for each of the legs and then just moved up and, and finished the lower legs pretty much before I moved on to the black lion which forms the whole central and upper torso area. And once I had that put together I had to figure out how to engineer the whole shoulder assembly. So you know it's sort of a one thing leads to another but it literally was built from the bottom up. There's a lot of details on the lions that are pretty much drawn straight from the toy. Um, I did a lot of poking around on the internet and looking for uh, pictures of the cartoon, pictures of the toy from 1984, 1985, right around that time. And also more recently, a couple years ago, there was a, what they called a masterpiece version of the toy released, which was a higher level of detail. It was a more expensive toy aimed at collectors. Um, I don't actually have one, but I found a lot of pictures online of that toy as well. And so from all those references, I tried to sort of strike the best balance I could given the fact that Lego is sort of blocky and chunky shaped anyway, um, it, it's hard to make a very sleek uh, uh, sort of robot, but uh, uh, this pretty much carries the proportions of the original toy pretty well, which, you know, I think that works all right. And um, at, at any rate, uh, I guess we could talk about some of the detail bits and things. Um, 
the uh, everything on the the toy is functional. So you know, I've got the you know the head folds up, and the um, all the lions are separable into their component parts, which uh, takes far too long to get on a video like this. So um, each one of the heads has a each one of the heads has a, an opening lid on it that has a cockpit inside for each one of the little characters to fit into. And then the all, all of the legs on the component lions are are made out of uh, click joints, so they're all posable and and can support themselves when they stand upright. Uh, I, I did build the sword. Um, I don't usually leave the sword on it for the display because it's fairly heavy and kind of makes it susceptible to falling over. But I can actually place the sword in his hand. Yeah, the, see the arm joint slipped a little bit there because the sword's pretty heavy, but he actually can hold it. It's, uh, it's just a, a pretty heavy item. <laughs>